Want to debug and control your ESP microcontrollers completely wirelessly? In my last video I showed you how to upload the code using the over the air functionality. Today I will take it further with Telnet connection to debug, monitor and send commands to the sketch. If you enjoy content like this, please like, share and subscribe. Also consider supporting me either through channel membership, Patreon, PayPal or Coffee. Your support makes a big difference. For a start, we need a sketch that produces serial output. A simple one, that initializes serial communication in setup, and in loop, we declare an integer variable i. Each time the loop runs, it prints the current value of i and then increments it and waits for one second. You might wonder why i isn't reset to zero on every loop execution, since it's declared inside the loop. That's because the static keyword makes the variable initialize only once, so its value is preserved between loop executions. We can now load this into the microcontroller and observe the outcome in serial monitor. Easy. Now, if we want to make this sketch IoT ready and add over the air functionality, things unfortunately become much more complex and that's even before we add any Telnet based debugging. Let's set our loop function aside for now, we'll come back to it later. For Wi-Fi functionality we first include the required library and define the connection credentials. Then in setup the board connects to the hotspot using these credentials. A while loop waits until the Wi-Fi connection is established before the sketch continues. With Wi-Fi in place we can add OTA support. That again requires a library include a line that activates the OTA update service and another that listens for incoming upload requests from the Arduino IDE. As you can see the code is already getting quite complex and we are about to extend it even further by adding Telnet functionality. We create Wi-Fi server object called Telnet server that listens on port 23, the standard Telnet port. Then we create a Wi-Fi client object called Telnet client which represents a single connected Telnet client. In setup we start the Telnet server and with set no delay we tell the TCP stack to send data immediately without batching, just like the normal serial monitor. Let's create a custom function to handle debug output. We will make it universal so it prints to the serial monitor if it's available and also sends messages to Telnet if a client is connected. In an ideal scenario we could just replace all serial print commands in the loop with this custom function. However the loop also needs to handle other tasks and checks. So it ends up being a bit more complex than a simple swap. In the loop function the ESP32 first checks if the new Telnet client is trying to connect. If no client is connected it accepts the new connection and sends a welcome message. But if a client is already connected it immediately rejects the second connection. When using services such as OTA or Telnet that listen for incoming connections, avoid using delay. While delay is executing the sketch is blocked and no other tasks are processed, which can break network functionality. Instead use the melees function to implement non-blocking timing. Every loop the ESP32 compares the current time with the last time it printed the counter. Once one second has passed, it prints the counter and increments it. Meanwhile, Arduino OTA handle ensures the device can receive updates at any moment. So the code is ready. To be able to debug it via Telnet, we need a Telnet client on our PC. There are many options available and I chose one called TerraTerm. Let's go to the download page and get the installation executable. Running it is a usual next 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 type of installation. Once installed we can open it. Here we hit the roadblock. It asks for a hostname or IP address of our microcontroller and I have no idea what it is. We need to go back to our code and add a couple of lines that will print this information upon connecting to Wi-Fi to the serial monitor so we can use it later. For now let's connect the microcontroller to the PC via the serial port. Since the board doesn't have an OTA ready sketch yet, our first upload must use the serial interface. This is actually convenient because we can open the serial monitor and see the IP address of the microcontroller.
Here it is. The code works as expected and the debug information is displayed only in serial monitor since there isn't a telnet connection yet. Now that we have the missing connection information, we can try connecting via telnet. And it works. The telnet client connects to the board and starts reporting the code status from the moment it connects. You can see that both serial monitor and telnet are showing the same information. Now let's disconnect the board from the computer. This disconnects both telnet and serial monitor. Let's connect the microcontroller to the power bank. The serial monitor remains inactive, but we can still establish a telnet connection. And here it is. We are now wirelessly monitoring the code status. We can go even more mobile than that. I looked for free telnet clients in the Apple Store and found this one, which I've already installed. Let's open it. All we need to do is enter the same connection details, the IP address and port 23. I will power up the board, which is still running our sketch, and while it's running I will start the Telnet connection. As you can see, we are now monitoring the progress of our program on the microcontroller directly from the mobile phone. It doesn't get much more remote than that. We can go much further when it comes to monitoring, debugging or even controlling our sketches using Telnet. Let's check out a different example. In one of my previous videos I created a clock that synchronizes with the internet and displays the time on a built-in OLED. For the prototype, I used a Wemos D1, which didn't have an OLED, so I sent all the information to the serial monitor instead. If we look at the code, you'll notice a lot of serial print calls. This video isn't about understanding that exact code. I just want you to focus on the loop function and I will show you that it has two main sections. The first section calculates the time and sends it to the serial monitor. The second section resynchronizes the microcontroller's time with the internet using an API. This resynchronization happens once a day at a specific timestamp. I took that code, added OTA and Telnet functionality, and replaced the serial print calls with the calls of our custom function logprint. After uploading this modified code, I can use my phone to connect to the microcontroller using Telnet, and you will see the same output that was previously sent only to the serial monitor. But let's try something different. Instead of constantly displaying the time, we can query the board to ask what time it is, or tell it to synchronize the time right now. I will focus only on the loop function here. Links to the full code are in the description. We start the loop the same way we did for the counter example. First we check if there is an incoming Telnet connection. If there is, we verify whether any connections are already open. If not, we establish the connection and send the confirmation message. At the end of the loop we also run the OTA handler. To capture commands, we need a string variable initialized as blank. While the Telnet client exists, is connected and has data ready to read, we read the characters typed in the Telnet session, ignoring carriage return characters. If we recognize a printable ASCII character, we append it to the buffer string variable and echo the same character back to the Telnet session so it reflects the input. When a new line character is detected, indicating that the command has been fully entered, we use a captured command as a parameter for a custom function that executes the corresponding action. Then we reset the buffer so it can be used for the next command and exit the while loop. So let's take a look at that custom function. It accepts the command string as a parameter and trims it just in case there are any extra spaces. If the command's length is zero, we simply exit the function and do nothing. Next, we have a series of if statements for each possible command. For example, if we detect the time command, we execute code to display the current time in the Telnet window. If the command is sync, we trigger a resynchronization of the microcontroller's time with the API provider. But we don't have to stop there. We can add another commands, like uptime, which shows how long the sketch has been running for or reboot, which restarts the microcontroller. We can also include a help command that displays a list of all available commands in the Telnet window. And finally, for any commands that are not recognized, we send a message letting the user know that the command was invalid. With the help command available, let's add a finishing touch to our loop function, so that upon connection, the user is informed about the help command and can execute it to see the list of other available commands. 
Let's upload this command-driven sketch to the board. We'll do it over the network port since we are working with OTA-enabled sketches. As you can see, the code is loaded over the air. Now let's connect a Telnet client on the phone to the microcontroller. The connection is successful and we get the hint that the help command is available. Let's run it first. Here is the list of all available commands. Let's go through them one by one. Time works as expected. Sync. The time is successfully synchronized. Uptime. The sketch has been running for the reported duration. Reboot. The microcontroller restarts and the Telnet session is disconnected. To continue interacting with the microcontroller, we simply need to reconnect the Telnet session. Now that we have learned how to remotely upload sketches to ESP microcontrollers and debug and control them using Telnet, I can't wait to apply this in my future projects. I will be publishing my first project using this setup very soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao!